In this video, we're gonna take a look at the often ignored video mode known as hyperlapse. It can be tricky to use, but I'm gonna show you how to use it like a boss. And we're starting right now. Hi, I'm Orman Beckles, AKA the High Tech Nomad, and welcome to another video. Hyperlapse, it's one of those modes that you wanna use, but you're not quite sure how to use it, so you've largely ignored it. By the end of this video, you're gonna know how to use the hyperlapse mode like a boss. The first question is, what the heck is the difference between a hyperlapse and a time lapse? I did a lot of research, and I came up with this oversimplified answer. If it's moving, it's a hyperlapse. If it's standing still, it's a time lapse. If you put your camera on a tripod and you point it towards the street and the camera stays in the same position, then that's considered a time lapse. If over the course of the time lapse, you keep adjusting the angle of the camera, if you have it on a tripod and you turn it at 10 degrees and then you come back and turn it at 20 and then 30 and then 40, then that's considered a hyperlapse. Let's go into the camera mode. Let's go into more, and then let's go into hyperlapse. In a hyperlapse, we have a couple of different options. Those options vary depending upon whether you're doing a hyperlapse with the front facing camera or the rear facing camera. If you're on the front facing camera, you basically have a choice of automatic or manual time select. We wanna make sure that you're on the rear facing camera because that's gonna give you a few more options. The first option is the gear icon, the same camera settings that you would have almost any time. So not to worry too much about those. The next one is for the flash and whether you wanna have the flash on or basically have the light on the back of the camera on. You never want that on for a hyperlapse. And the reason is that a hyperlapse could take a few minutes to hours to complete. What we don't wanna do is we don't wanna run out of battery power and we don't wanna have the phone interrupt us and we don't wanna have the phone overheat. If we turn on that rear light, that is going to significantly drain the battery and it's going to significantly raise the temperature on the phone. If you need extra light, get some other lights. I'll put some links for some cheap ones. I have a little battery powered one that I got for $20. You can clip it on the phone. So you do not want that on, period. Next one is super steady. If you're holding it, it's going to help you keep from jarring it. That is ridiculous because if you're taking a time lapse, it, the time lapse might be a few minutes to a few hours. If they think I'm going to stand there and hold this phone manually for two hours, then they got another thought coming. If you're taking something real quick, or you're going to take one of, it's only going to last a, a couple of minutes. You don't have a tripod, but almost always when you do a hyperlapse, you're going to use a tripod. And the other issue with the super steady is. If you turn on super steady, you cannot lock the exposure. And that's more important than making it steady. So never turn on the super steady. The next one is a nighttime mode. It's a specialty nighttime mode. It will do the hyperlapse, but it'll also change the shutter speed. Here's an example of what it looks like. As you can see, we have these nice little light streaks. We don't have any other option in this mode. This last option we have which starts off with the A for automatic. It then goes 4X, 8X, 16X, 32X. If you have a Note 20 and Note 20 Ultra, then you also have a 64X. I believe the Note 10 stops at 32. This is how you set how often it should take a, a picture, whether it's once every two seconds or four seconds or six seconds. That's what makes the, the hyperlapse. I'm gonna show you a very simple way of using that. First, let me tell you why you never wanna use the A or automatic mode if you want something really nice. And that is because the automatic mode or the A mode, what it does is it starts your hyperlapse. However, it doesn't know how long this is gonna take. It doesn't know if you're gonna take five minutes, 10 minutes, an hour, two days, three months, a year. So what it does is it looks at each frame and if it doesn't see a whole lot of movement over a couple of frames, it says, nah, we might as well stop, we'll take a break. And that's why you get results like this. You'll see everything's moving along really good. I really have a good time lapse here. And then we get these pauses, these little, I don't like them. And the reason it's doing that is because at that particular point in time, it said, hey, I don't think there's as much going on here 
as it was before, therefore I'm gonna take a little break. I'm gonna show you how to use the other modes and those are much better for doing hyperlapses. Here's my little cheat sheet for figuring out what to set your settings to. Well, let's take an example. I want to take a hyperlapse of a sunset. And I've watched over a couple of days and I see that the sunset takes about 20, 25 minutes. When you're playing it back, people get bored watching a hyperlapse after about 30 seconds. So let's just assume that I wanna create a hyperlapse of the sunset and I want it to take about 30 seconds. I just said it was gonna take 20, 25 minutes. Now I know I would set the hyperlapse to 32X, which means I'll get 22 minutes. Using this chart, you can see that all you have to do is figure out how long you think something is going to take or how long you wanna observe or record for and make the correct setting based upon that. According to the definition I gave at the beginning of the video, I've basically showed you how to do time lapses. I said in order for it to be considered a hyperlapse, it should be moving while it's doing the time lapse. The easiest way to get a hyperlapse, which is to record a time lapse and have it move, is with something like this. There are some more expensive ones out there. I'll put a link for this down below. This one is very inexpensive. And basically it's like the old egg timer. We're gonna turn this in five minute increments and it's going to turn the camera over that course of time. So we'll be doing our time lapse, but we'll also be moving our angle, which then makes it a traditional hyperlapse. You decided what you want to take a hyperlapse of, you have your tripod. Here's a checklist that I go through every time I'm going to do a hyperlapse. The first one is I make sure to put my phone's display mode in the lowest possible resolution, which is HD, which is 720. And the reason for that is that the display is not gonna go off, unfortunately, during this time lapse. And so we wanna minimize battery drain and we wanna minimize the heat that is being generated by our phone. So setting it to 720, it won't alter the final product, but it will require less energy for it to keep the camera. The next one is check the phone battery level. If you're gonna do a really long one, then I suggest that you go ahead and plug it into a power supply so that it's not gonna die in the middle of doing your hyperlapse. The next one is put it in airplane mode. I've had too many hyperlapses that get interrupted because I get a phone call or I get a notification or something and it kicks it out of camera mode. The next one is make sure that the tripod or clamp is secure. And the next one is make sure that your tripod or your clamp is level. Use the cheat sheet that I'm gonna put a link to down below to get your desired recording settings and time. Do you wanna turn on exposure lock? I mentioned that earlier. Exposure lock, to turn it on, place your finger on the screen until a yellow lock appears. That means that it won't keep trying to readjust the lighting. As I said, you cannot lock the exposure if you have super steady on, but I've already said don't turn it on. We've got that all set. The next one is turn your screen brightness down as low as possible. Same thing, we wanna maximize the amount of battery power we have as long as possible. Then the next one is do start your recording and let it go for a few seconds and then stop and take a look. Make sure that it's okay. There was nothing worse than committing to doing a hyperlapse for two hours and then find out that the camera wasn't set or it got interrupted because somebody got a text message or a notification or what have you. In the comments below, let me know, now that you understand how to use hyperlapse, will you use it more? In the next video, we're going to slow things down. That's right, we're gonna take a look at slow mode and super slow mode, and we're gonna do some really cool things with that not just slowness. You think of just slowing something down. I'm gonna show you how to do a really cool trick. I'm gonna show you how to use it in a way to replace a $200 slider. We're gonna be opening our membership program up next week to everyone. I wanna thank all of the beta people who have helped us out setting up this membership program. We think we have a really solid program now. We have a really good schedule for getting new content in there. As always, we will continue to make these non-membership videos. If you now know how to use Hyperlapse, please click the like button, click the subscribe button, and until the next time, this is Ormond Beckles, AKA the High Tech Nomad, signing out.